Uh, first of all, you know, I want to be um, thankful to Joshua Zebik for having us here. Right. Um, this is episode one of the Pop Finance Podcast. Um, I really wanted to go ahead and take time just kind of to introduce what we're doing, Yoani. And then, you know, we could also introduce Joshua Zebik and, you know, we'll jump into it. But right. um, the Pop Finance Podcast, you know, we're focusing on merging, you know, pop culture and finance matters and really just talking to people who have done it at a big scale, right? And Joshua Zebek, my guy here, is one of those guys. So um, funny story, I met him back in 2018 and now I'm back in his house, you know, in 2021. So um, a lot has happened since then and I'm excited. Well, thank you guys for having me on your very first podcast of what I'm sure will be many. Oh, no, for sure. Um, funny, funny thing is, because I don't think I shared it with him, but how I was reaching out to you so many times and like, dude, I was, I was not giving up on reaching mm-hmm. out to him because, um, so, well, I'll let you introduce yourself first. Cause look, you're already, already going on. <laughs> it's unscripted. So we might go all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm Joshua Dzibiak, um, serial entrepreneur. I'm a new father. Um, I've been in tech. Congrats. Thank there you. you go. Thank you. It's, it's amazing and exhausting at the same time. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I've been in tech all my life since I was 14, which is when I started my, my first business. And, um, I have built, uh, five companies. Um, one, uh, two of them have been acquired. And then, um, the most recent one is a company called the zebra. Uh, and it's a, uh, tech company tech company in the insurance space. So we help, you know, consumers compare insurance, uh, mm-hmm. to put it very simply. And, uh, that company is, has, uh, done, done very well, fortunately. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, and I, I spent about eight years there, um, building that company up until about this time last year, a little sooner. And, uh, I stepped down, uh, from the day to day. I still sit on the board, mm-hmm. but, um, still remain kind of in tune to it, but now I'm kind of on to it, to something new. Um, got the itch to start something again and, uh, yeah, I'm back at it. So that's a really dope dude. Um, Started a business like in his teenage years. That's crazy. Like, yeah, I, I was, uh, I was 14 years old. I had, uh, employees before I had a driver's license. Uh, which no, was, no, was no, kind no. Of odd. <laughs> Hold on, that's fucking crazy. Cause first of all, like. <laughs> How, how, like, how do <laughs> how? you even know? Cause the thing is, you know, people can start businesses. So back in the day, I thought I started a business, right? And I was selling like books, you know? Like, uh-huh. was yeah, like, yeah, like, that, yeah. So it's, it's just uh-huh. like collecting money and stuff. But you were a tech entrepreneur back when tech was not really, you know, like popping like it is now. Right. So how were you finding these spaces and actually going into them, you know, turning them into business, monetizing, mm-hmm creating partnerships, I just would have been lost as fuck, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that I knew exactly what I was mm-hmm. doing, that's for sure. Um, but I, uh, it was really just a, a passion of web design, actually. So I taught myself, um, and you're right, It's this is like predates a lot of like, pretty much every new technology, modern technology for sure. Uh, uh, but for the audience, was this like back in the 2000s or this would have been 2000, 2000. Yeah. Around 2000, 2001, I believe I started. <laughs> Early, I said, wow. Yeah. So this is like 56 K modem, mm-hmm. you know, dial yeah. up internet. Um, but I taught myself how to design websites. Um, and it was happened to be great timing, right? Like it was a time when every business wanted to be online, but mm-hmm. you know, they didn't have a presence yet. So it wasn't hard to get, clients. Um, and I was, I became like this local go-to kid, you know, if you, if you owned a small business and you wanted to, to create a website for it, you know, I could do it on the cheap and do a good job. And, and that is what really turned into the business was, was, um, just designing websites. And then, um, uh, I started hosting them. I taught myself how to like host these, you know, create servers and lease the space and that sort of thing. Quick question before we go into the hosting, he said like, you know, that I just became the go-to local kid. Let's break down how you became the go-to local kid. Like, <laughs> yeah. How did you get your name out there? Like, were you, you know, passing out cards or, you know, word of mouth? Or did you have, like, a portfolio that you showcased? You know, it's always, like, the hardest thing is getting the first client. And mm-hmm. then, um, you know, if you can leverage that first experience um, in some way, shape, or form to get the next one, it starts to snowball from there, hopefully. Uh, and that's kind of what happened. But I, I'd say that... Um, it was really a matter of just, yeah, networking, um, 
doing a good job, you know, and, uh, also like timing is, is super helpful, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I did not know, I wasn't like old enough to know what right. even strategy really was, but I just happened to like kind of start this <laughs> thing crazy. right at the right time. That's um, awesome. yeah. So, I mean, I did, I did AdWords at the time it was called Google AdWords, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like paid marketing and things, um, a little bit here and there on other types of platforms, but by and large, I was I was able to um, kind of scale it just just organically for the most part, which wow. was that's really was dope. Awesome. I think uh, yeah. so. One of the things that I usually like to look into, you know, for entrepreneurs is like the daily routine. What mm -hmm. exactly are they doing to you know make sure they're staying ahead of the game mm -hmm. and you know on pace? At fourteen, what was your <laughs> like type of daily routine you had going for that Ooh. business? Exactly. Um, as much as you could remember. <laughs> yeah, as much as I could. So I, I remember I was, first off, I was very stressed out. Mm -hmm. I, you know, starting a business at the age of 14 um, is not something I necessarily recommend for a 14-year-old unless you, you know, <laughs> are, are just uh, uh, headstrong and, you know, have the ability to take the time outside of school and stuff. I had to drop out of school. So I, I actually did not graduate. Oh, wow. I didn't really even graduate high school. I didn't go to college. Um, you know, neither of my parents went to college, uh, but they worked for my grandfather's business, which was a local, um, uh, small kind of, um, service-based business. And, uh, you know, so, so for me, it was like starting a business was just kind of how you made money. Um, mm -hmm. that's what I saw. Um, and so, yeah, so I wasn't going, I stopped going to school. So it was really just like, you know, wake up. Um, I would, uh, I, when I started the office, it was, it was, you know, I made sure to have routine, very structured office hours and it was just me to start. I just had a little space, uh, near my home. So I, I would, uh, my aunt who lived nearby would often take me to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would just wait, you know, for someone to pick me up at the end. And if I had a meeting, I sometimes I'd have to have my employees drive me to it. Um, <laughs> but the reason I say I was so stressed out is because like, you know, you're so young mm -hmm. starting, starting something. And like, I knew, I knew nothing about, you know, accounting or operations or managing people or what, right. you know? So I was learning everything like in real time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I also desired to have a social life. I was 14 right. years old. So it was like, you know, everybody wants some level of social life, but especially when you're young, like, yeah, your friends are doing fun things. So, I, and then on top of that, I was in the web hosting space. So like, you know, website goes down or server goes down. Sorry. It's like, you know, it's not, it's not a fun day, right? right? Like everything's it's, it's, manual. Yeah, yeah. Everything's manual. I remember, I don't know. You guys remember the T-Mobile sidekicks? Those like, phones oh, yeah. Those. Yep. Yeah, I, was in elementary school. <laughs> I had, I remember when they came out and I got one of those and I loved it because it had this, it was the first phone that had like a, a terminal on it that you could actually use like to to log into a server remotely um and so i remember like i would mm -hmm. be out and i would be able to like send us electric signal to right. the servers to reboot them remotely using my little t-mobile sidekick it was, <laughs> it was like super cumbersome yeah. but anyway i mean it, i learned a lot but yeah, it was a lot. It, it was a lot to handle for a fourteen-year-old. That's for sure. And that time when Sidekicks was, uh, sidekicks was popping, mm -hmm. I was playing around with iPod shuffles. Oh, oh yeah, 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 we did have the iPod shuffles. I yeah. still remember. I was in third grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. So uh, you know, obviously, yeah, you were stressed. You had to learn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with that? You know, as give people an insight because I feel like a lot of people when they start businesses right. obviously you know it's really hard to like okay I gotta dedicate time to accounting now to learn it mm -hmm. and then you you still have to focus on the vision of the business mm -hmm. how are you handling that and making sure you were making the progress and then client work sounds like shit I mean you dropped off dropped out of school to like focus on the business mm -hmm. it was busy so mm -hmm. man like I think it's all about who you surround yourself with you know like so I, I knew like at a young age that that so I grew up on a farm. Some mm -hmm. more context. I grew up on a farm, um, kind of 40 minutes north of the city of Pittsburgh, kind of what felt like in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so I didn't. I wasn't necessarily a part of like tech meetups or mm -hmm. anything related to what I was doing. <laughs> but um, I did end up meeting some folks online that were doing similar things or have been there, done that, and um, 
you know, I, I just built relationships with them and that was like, they were my outlet. Like, you know, I was constantly asking them for their feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even just like trying to get to know them. So for the sake of like, you know, catching some inspiration, right? Like, um, seeing what can be done and what's possible. But, um, I was very, I was very fortunate to, to connect with a few different people that I think really inspired me and really helped me, um, kind of manage a lot of the stuff that, you know, everything was new to me. So, um, yeah, I gotta say that that's probably the biggest thing I, I remember doing that was super helpful. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like uh, relationships, that's that's one big aspect. I mean, I talk to him all the time about, you know, trying to stay around those people that, mm -hmm. you know, can really keep you driven and stuff. Yeah. Um, how do you, what, what type of qualities that these people have? I guess that's something that uh, a lot of people, you know, me as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. trying to identify those characteristics that right. inspire you. And it's different mm -hmm. for everybody. But for you, what were those things? I think it's... it's um it would come down to, you know, ability for them to like communicate to me in a way that was, um, in layman's terms, you know, like, yeah. uh, because you, sometimes you, you know, you have these ideas like, oh, you know, I want to meet this person or I, 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 you know, would love this for this person to be my mentor. And, but the reality is, is like a lot of people don't know how to mm -hmm. communicate especially to a 14 year old, like, or, or, but to anybody starting out in a way that really actually helps them get to the next step. Mm -hmm. And it could just be because maybe they're so far removed. They don't even remember, like, you know, it's like right. they're a little out of touch with, with reality in some regard, or just is like, yeah, they, they think so technical that they can't figure out how to like communicate it in a way that actually helps you. So I think like ability to communicate effectively and, 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 you know, um, you know, that kind of comes down to like, do you vibe with that person? Like, can you pick up what they're right. putting down sort of thing? Right. Um, and, uh, and then I think it's, uh, for me, like, I don't think I did this intentionally, but I think it was really helpful to have very humble people. Like humility mm -hmm. is a great quality, right? And a mentor, because, um, yeah, you don't, you don't want to be dealing with an ego, right? When you're trying to ask right, questions, right. like, uh, so yeah, I mean that, that kind of comes to mind, but, um, yeah. Or, I mean, certainly like field like industry experts or subject matter expertise, um, is really important mm -hmm. if you're doing something that, that requires that. Um, yeah. And then, you know, Google, Google was my best friend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it was That's Yahoo so first and then Google, but really like I taught myself so much just like, you know, just Still finding, talk. yeah, just Still finding talk. articles online and, and, you know, just kind of doing it in real time and yeah. learning the hard way in some cases. That's how it be. And I think a lot of people, you know, sometimes um, that's when you have to start realizing, do you really want to do this business, right. entrepreneurship thing? Yeah. You know, because it's not about um, half-assing it. You're going to have those moments where you're going to mm -hmm. have to put some attention, like he said, you know, into other things and really learn it. Or you could pay other people to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have limited resources. So mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, you say you sold your company at a very young age. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Like, what was the process behind <laughs> that? So, for example, it's hard to kind of just wrap my head around somebody reaches out. It's like, hey, we want to buy this company from you. Yeah. And you're very young. It's like, who influenced you? Who helped you out? What was that process like? So it w I mentioned how stressed I was, right? Right. So... It was tax season, mm -hmm. um, and I was trying. I think I was doing like, I remember I was so mad, right? Because I was paying all these taxes and I still couldn't vote. Like, wow. <laughs> it was like, I felt That's very crazy. passionate about this That's issue. Uh, well, you were still 14 at the time? When I sold it, I was 17, but 17. you know, you can't vote two years, years later. later. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I was, I was really stressed out. It was tax season, I was meeting with my CPA, and um, you know, of course, he knew my, my books and like, you know, the, the, the growth trajectory of the business and you knew what sector I was in and certainly knew a lot more about finances than I did. Um, but he wanted to open a business brokerage firm mm -hmm. and he saw what I was doing and felt like it would be easy to find someone that would want to scoop it up. And so kind of out of a moment of like stress, I was like, you know, he asked me, would you be interested in selling this? And, and I was like, I really haven't never thought about it, but I said to him, I was like, you know, tell me what, go you know, look into it and tell me what you think you can get for it. And, you know, who knows, maybe I'll sell it. And it was kind of like a fleeting, you know, moment, like thought. I didn't really think much past that. But he came to me with buyers, like, 
you know. Left and right. Wow. Right. <laughs> and um, even more stress. I know, like, even more yeah. stress. And you know, like I look back and like I don't think he intentionally like took advantage of me at all. Mm-hmm. But he helped me out, but um, you know, I probably could have like really maximize the value a lot yeah, more, more than I did. But like, you know, you're 17, I mean, you're 17 meeting with a CPA. Yeah. And like, it's like, you see a number like that. You're like 17. You're just like, all right, let's do it. You know? So, yeah, okay. so it was, I was lucky to have him in that whole, you know, situation happening with him starting the brokerage firm that he kind of guided me through that mm-hmm. process. Otherwise, I don't know, like I, who knows what I would have done. Um, but I was, the stress helped, right? Cause yeah. it was like, ah, oh, yeah. Like I, I just want to kind of move on from from, from this. Uh, and that's crazy. He says, like, I don't know, because that, that's probably what brought you here, too. You know, it's like yeah. choices. Choices really yeah. affect your trajectory. Totally. Kind of like um, just, I mean, being here. You know, mm-hmm. it's like yeah. if I wouldn't have reached out last minute, because I was like, man, fuck this. I need to reach out one more time. <laughs> I would probably not have been here. That's, the one. It's, it's that's like, the one that works. Just choices. Yeah. So um, you touched on taxes. And... Um, me myself, so you know, we set up when that's a C corp, mm-hmm. and my homie told me about 10B forms. I know what the hell a 10B form mm-hmm. was, and he was like, "It's gonna save you a lot of money later mm-hmm. on." Started looking into it, so I want to know what type of enti- entity that y'all have, and if you could kind of like break down to the audience, because what I like to think about, you know, me as an investor, is that um, a lot of your wealth usually comes from the things that are controllable. Mm-hmm. Taxes is one of the main things. Mm-hmm. So how are you thinking about that? And what are some things that you started realizing later on that, oh, I could have done differently and maximize, you know, my value, my returns or, mm-hmm. or whatnot? So like on a personal level or more on like the business side of it? I think in wealth and in, in terms, like just structures you have, right? You yeah. Have yeah. Entity. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'd say um, one of the things I've learned uh, in the last more recently has been, uh, you know, just the importance of trying to you know, get as much wealth out of your own estate as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I look back and I wish I would have done things like set up trusts earlier, right? right. Especially yeah. after like my, my first business, because, you know, I can't, can't expect, uh, you know, somebody young and never had started a business before and didn't have any you know, I didn't come from a family that had, had, um, a ton of money or anything like that. So, um, I didn't know any better, but, but now I look back and I, you know, I've actually just had a conversation recently with, um, a guy that's been advising me and, you know, he kind of ran a scenario that like, had I set up a grantor trust Mm -hmm. when, when I started, um, uh, the zebra or any of my companies really like what, it freezes your your assets at the value mm. at that time and helps with like the taxes. Yeah, uh, the, you know if you assume that it's going to appreciate in value, um, it helps get some of that those assets out of your personal, you know, estate. Right. So so, so it's basically like um, let's say uh, to put it in simple terms, you know, your your value of your assets are worth like let's say a hundred dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know there's going to be some appreciation later on. Mm-hmm. So it keeps them fixed at that value to like limit your tax later on or how exactly? Kind of. And I'm not like, uh, you know, a big expert on like trust, uh, trusts and living wills and all that. But yeah. it's, so essentially like you, when you create the, it's called a grantor trust. And it's, it's that way because um, essentially you are the, you um, the beneficiary as well as the trustee so it's all you know something you can control it's no Mm -hmm. it's there's really no different uh difference in terms of um you know your ability to access or use the 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 finances Uh, maybe some slight things here or there but um and so when and then you you essentially like sell uh your assets into that trust um and so yeah the trust kind of owns and oversees those assets um but when you do that it gets it out of your own um personal wealth so okay. then then that you're not you know income tax um estate tax uh you know kind of differs whenever you're able to kind of pull mm-hmm. some of that out so um yeah and, and it does it so it will like at the value when you sell it to the trust essentially um, you sell it at the value, the present value, assuming it's going to appreciate and the Delta between from the time you sold it to, you know, what it's worth whenever you actually, the trust at that point mm-hmm. liquidates it, there's, um, it, 
it kind of helps with some of the estate taxes and, and personal liabilities and things like that. It also protects you, right? If someone wants right, to come after right. you. Exactly. Like, yeah. So, um, yeah, like I don't, I don't, like I said, I'm not an expert with that stuff and that's part of the no, reason I didn't do it that's earlier. Cool. That, that's cool though. Like I, I like that because it's like, even though he's not an expert, you know, you like, there's so many resources out there and you mm -hmm. sometimes have to like look it up. Unfortunately, yeah. some people don't have access to that, but even sharing, like you said, like a grand tour trust, you know, you could just finding out about these yeah. things. I remember when I used to work at the pension fund and I first got into investing, I would, he I would hear EBITDA, EBITDA <laughs> yeah. a lot, right? And then it's like, as you get into investing, you're like, yeah. okay, that's a good metric. Like, yep. uh, but you wouldn't have known if you're no. not working in that, you know, Domain. industry or domain right, right, yeah. right and you're hearing these terms kind of like you with cloud right yeah like you're hearing a lot of sometimes you, you still come back home yeah sometimes around he it. comes back home and he says some like technical ass shit and i'm like bro you're still telling me on. so there's computers like on the air and i'm like oh, <laughs> kind of you could put a million computers in the air and stop they all run processes me, <laughs> <laughs> i was like wait so you can detach like the memory and uh, put it on another one. I'm like, yeah, all in the air. It's all in the air. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I have him, you know, like or like people like yeah. that. That so I I say that because um, for the audience, you know, there's so many things. I, I was just talking with one of my friends, and you know, I was helping her out um, with a, with investments, and and she told me she was gonna buy some more property because she mm -hmm. already has one. And I was like, hey, you should look into like setting up an entity and buying the property through there yep, because yep. they could just help you later on with your wealth structure. And it's like some people, you know, sometimes it's having these things being said around, mm -hmm. you know, their environment, it helps you out. And you're a prime example, you know, you didn't know too, too much about it, but at least you had somebody mention it. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you have to kind of like, you can hire people to try to give you advice on this and, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, maybe you have a friend or something, but the, but the reality is, is like, it's very hard to find people that will proactively, right. you know, at, or maybe just even ask the right questions mm. to, to kind of get it out of you so that they can guide you the right way. Like, and so I, what I've learned with that is even though you, you may hire someone or have a mentor or friend or something that you can lean on, you still got to do your own like oh, research, yeah. right? Cause they don't know every, you know, dot and tittle that like, right. Right. you know, and every detail of your, the context of what you're doing now and what you plan to do, um, or what your concerns are. And you know, it's so hard. Like sometimes you don't know what, what questions you should be asking, mm -hmm. but you know, it's 2021. There's like a bazillion articles about everything out there. So yeah. you could do some research and compare, you know, what others are saying and then bring that to them and say, you know, Hey, what about this? Or why, why, you know, why aren't we talking about that? Is mm -hmm. it not relevant to me? Or, um, so you got, you still got to like ask those questions, um, right. to, to kind of, you know, find the right resolution. I, I very rarely have I worked with like an attorney or, uh, an accountant or, or, you know, name any field and any expertise like mm -hmm. that is, that is, you know, always like proactively, right. um, advising, mm -hmm. um, you kind of still have to do your own legwork, you know? That's a fact, man. I, I like that. Um, so, you know, obviously you went to your, uh, CPA, he, you know, he told you he was going to sell the company yeah. You found some people. So what happens then? Right. Obviously, you sell the company. You have all this money. You're a teenager. <laughs> Your parents probably like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? He's making more money than I. He's drug yeah. dealing. <laughs> that actually did happen. Oh, like, really? <laughs> well, not the drug dealing, oh, uh, but uh, parents something. wondering. Yeah, like you know, because they had no. Again, this was even before. I mean, now it's a, everything's like mm -hmm. just kind of like de facto mainstream. To, you know, some of this stuff, but. But uh, then certainly it was. Plus, he so. it came from a rural area too. Yeah. Right? So they were like, "What? You know what? How? But thank God, like they really trusted mm -hmm. me, and they saw they saw how much I was learning and oh, what I, you know, and they they probably had that intuition that I was getting into something that could be big, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. What was that? What was? Your yeah. Point? No. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I was gonna hear that. I was like, so basically, you know, you have all these sell proceeds, and it's like, what now? I mean, me personally. If I had that money, this is my personal opinion, I would have, you know, started looking for investments or throw it into an ETF, right? Mm -hmm. I have so much money now, it's just mm -hmm. gonna compound and let's, let's let it ride, you know, and do fun stuff. At, yeah. at that age, you think you have so much money, you can do whatever the hell you want. Mm -hmm. what was yeah, I know. Um, I, I wasn't as smart as you, for sure. But, so I took, uh, I, I took some money and had some fun, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I remember I bought, um, I bought a, a Mercedes on eBay and had it delivered 
to my house. Oh wow! And, and I did that because I went. I was. I went to the the dealership, the, like the local dealership, mm-hmm. and they would not give me the time of day because they just assumed that I could not oh, wow. like afford any of it. And so it was my what kind they say? of like. What they say? Well, it was just the way they treated me. You know, it was like it was. It, there was really no. They they weren't giving me the time of day. They were very kind of bearish on like you know ability to get me into a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I I don't I don't know. I left with just such a. You know, I was like, it was like my middle finger to them was Revenge. like, just go and like <laughs> buy it and pay it for it cash and just yeah, have it delivered. So, you know, I had fun. I, I, I did some stuff like that. I bought my toys. Uh, but but I think the, the smartest thing I did was what you just said is I took some some of the funds and started investing in other ideas and things that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And every investment I made, it was because um, it was always things I could control. So it was, it was businesses essentially that I was starting or right. ideas that I had. But it was always like the common denominator was always like with stuff that I was really interested in. Um, and I never knew anything about it necessarily, mm-hmm. but I felt like you know, I had the resources to kind of get my way, like make my way into it right. by kind of making those investments. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, one of them stuck, which was happened to turn out be my next company after the company that I'd sold when I was 17. Um, and, uh, yeah. And so you just don't know, which you know, company was that one exactly? It's a company called show clicks. Uh, oh, show clicks. Right. right. Yeah. It's, it's a really, and then their See, valuation you're, is not too bad. You're a big believer of square, man. You're like, oh, no, I try not to get married with my stocks. So but, that's one third of your portfolio. Yeah, I'm pretty married to it. But, <laughs> but I believe, like, dude, I'm pretty sure you get the same feeling. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, entrepreneurs, Elon Musk, he has a big stake on Elon Musk, but I, I, I low key, Elon Musk, I feel like some ethical, I just, I don't know his ethics, really? man. Yeah. He thinks they're cooking the books. I I'm think like, they're nah. cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're cooking the books? <laughs> Tesla? I hope not. I mean, this guy does some pretty like SpaceX. he does some shit sometimes where it's just like so egotistical, like yeah, some yeah. Kanye shit, and I'm just like, bro, why are you, you know, it's like, but whatever. <laughs> Jack right, so. Dorsey, <laughs> this guy said he meditates two times a day, so I put my trust into him. <laughs> <laughs> this is going part of the podcast too. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's been recording. So. So, so yeah, we were just basically talking about um, investing. I think that's actually a good segue into talking about, you know. We'll talk about show clicks. Show clicks, that's and great. I also want to get into some of your investments because that's obviously what we're focusing on. You know, like wealth journey, building wealth. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump into show clicks. What what was show clicks exactly? So show clicks, it, it's still around. It's a um, t- another tech company, uh, but we serve the live entertainment space. So basically, we built software for venues, event organizers, promoters to sell tickets online um, at a box office. We built technology for like scanning tickets. Mm-hmm. So if you're hosting an event, you know, you could leverage our, our technology. It was like, kind of like a competitor to Ticketmaster, right. much more like modern, modern solution at that time, um, where Ticketmaster was obviously the big you know, incumbent at legacy solution. Yeah. Um, so something similar, but we weren't focused on those like big acts like the you know the national sporting leagues and stuff like that where Ticketmaster really more has a strong niche. foot yeah we were more in like middle market smaller niche um type events so nice. but that that was that was uh f- like a lot of fun for me because it was right at the intersection of technology and entertainment mm-hmm. which is something i both you know things i i really enjoy so what you into like in terms of, yeah you know i i love like I, the the reach right like so with live entertainment it was you you build this technology and then you can actually like see it like literally manifest in front of you like at the event right people using it like i said to buy tickets at the box mm-hmm. office everybody coming in with you know their ticket that uh, was purchased through your platform yeah. and you can see um you can see the technology at play and i love that and entertainment and i think it was like you know, I, to be honest, I think at that age, it was like very much just the shiny, like, you know, the appeal of, right. uh, of the entertainment industry that hey, I was drawn to. At this to. point, you're not 17 anymore. Are you still 17? <laughs> I'm forever 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 18 talking about. Forever 18. So wow. like, well, okay, because uh, he, jumps, he jumps into it so fast. He knows like, shit, I started a new company and like this and that. Well, hold on, hold on. What lessons did you take from the last company and start implementing to this yeah, one? Yeah. You were like, okay, now I got this figured out. You know, and I'm yeah, thinking about um, like setting up the entity and those little minor steps that actually later on, kind of like the tax, you know, setting up and all that. 
I'd say, you know, I really fumbled through my first business so much that like I learned a lot of what like not to do, but I still, I still didn't necessarily have like good experience with some of the, I don't know, call it corporate governance or like, you know, the, the, the stuff that just like kind of, yeah, like just kind of like makes your eyes roll back in your head sort of thing. Like, um, important stuff, but um, so I made the, I made mistakes, actually probably more mistakes setting up my second company because, um, we ended up raising venture capital. And, uh, when we did that, we had, well, we had created the business as an LLC. And then, um, it, later when we went to go raise capital, like that type of structure, most often than not does not make sense for, you know, a venture capital firm or any private equity firm Why to like, that? Oh, um, just the, the structure, usually tax reasons or, um, you know, it's just the, the, the way that the structure is with, with, uh, having a class of shares and, you know, um, uh, down to like an LLC is basically just a pass through, you know, mm. uh, entity. So, uh, yeah, so I, we had to redo everything. Um, so yeah, that, that I took a lot of lessons then for my, you know, the company after that, but, um, and quick question at this yeah. point, you're still like doing everything yourself, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't have really an advisor. On uh, no, uh, I wouldn't say I really had an advisor on, on that side of it. I, I was, besides Google. yeah, besides, besides Google. <laughs> I did, uh, what I did was I built like a, an MVP um, using, I offshored, I found some developers offshore. Mm -hmm. um, and I was basically like a, you know, like I said, my background's in web design, so I did all the design, but I was also basically like a project manager, like, mm. cause it was every day, you know, specking out the features, then testing what they previously right. released. Um, and there's always bugs, right? So like here are the bugs, like doing quality assurance like that. It, that was everyday iteration all the time until we had something that we felt like we could sell. Uh, and so that's where I spent like the majority of my time. And that, and as hard as that was, like mm -hmm. you have the product and it's like, okay, now I actually have to sell it. You know, like I have to get it out there and like get it in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, I had an amazing, um, uh, business partner uh, that I met eventually. Uh, so I started the, started the company, had that prototype that I'm mentioning, and then I met her, um, and she brought a whole new kind of, you know, flavor. She was right. the yin to my yang sort of thing. And uh, that was super helpful because she brought a lot to the table that I, I, I did not, you know, know. Mm -hmm. So how you get into these communities, like reaching out to, I think one a big challenge is like finding a co-founder, mm -hmm. you know, and usually we like look to friends and just go into business with a friend. But like, yeah. let's say you don't have no friends with the same um, vision you have. Mm -hmm. How did you go about that? Like, did, would you just go on the web and look for people? Or? You can now. I mean, there's a bunch of like, you yeah, like know, meetup, I'm thinking yeah, like meetup meetups and things. Um, but I, first and foremost like it's really about like you have to be able to like vibe and jive with that person right. you know what i mean and that was it was like you want to work with this person right like because it's mm -hmm. like they make everything fun they bring exactly. something to the table you don't bring um like i said i think looking for the opposite attributes that you have like there's no use having two people around the table that's mm -hmm. all there's around the table and both people have the same skill set right like right. so um uh, so in this case, I actually met her, I took a, a, a job helping to launch another startup um, in, the, in the States here, kind of skipped over that part, but it was, it was short lived, but because I started the, the next company, but I met her, she was working for that company and we worked mm -hmm. together um, and we worked together very well. And so, and she had a background in entertainment and it just like kind of- The perfect match. Yeah. Friends. But you can, you could absolutely like, I don't think there's, um, I, I don't think there's any like silver bullet to finding like, you know, the perfect co-founder and there's no such thing as a perfect, co you know, co-founder. But if, if you can, if they have a passion for something that's, mm -hmm. you know, related to what it, your idea is and you feel like you can work with them or you have experience working with them and you know that like, you know, maybe they're looking for new opportunities, um, bring it up, you know, like, exactly. don't, right. you know, don't, don't do geo and be like, Oh, I need you to sign an NDA. <laughs> like I, before I, I share my idea. Uh, so I, 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 have, I had an idea guys. And I 
trying to make a Josh sign in the DM. I'm like, look, man, this guy gonna steal my idea. I'm fucking with it. <laughs> hey, bro, I can't talk to you till later on to yeah. meet a person. It's because Gio's very competitive. Once he has his mind on something, it's like he yeah. wants to create it and he wants that to I be wanna, that's a that number too. one. I the one, on the that. number one. Yeah. yeah so but, like, uh, no, yeah, dude, you, 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 you like. Uh, I, I I get I get that sense like you you definitely have that vibe but I saw the pop finance trademark I was like fuck Josh, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> shit you know you know got that shit I was like I'm about to get my lawyers <laughs> like where is it from Canada let's see if he has any ties to Canada that's where I set up my trust is again <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's funny as hell no um that's that's really dope dude so like you know you reinvested you're giving me Elon Musk vibes because you know. Elon Musk, you know, they PayPal and then mm -hmm, went straight mm -hmm. into Tesla and, you know, um, yeah. his other ventures. The boring company the, and then he has some others. I mean, it's basic, it's just right. jumping around and getting yeah. very creative. So get into his next idea. You said you uh, started tapping in into something new. And what was that? Yeah. So um, I knew I wanted to do something that was like um, uh, direct to consumer, like building a brand. Um, and I didn't, I didn't really have any opinion or thoughts around like the category mm -hmm. or it was just, I just wanted to build technology in a, you know, in the consumer world. So, um, I had helped start this like incubator program in Pittsburgh, um, with the same firm that had, it was one of our first and largest investors in show clicks. Um, and we would, you know, we'd accept um, different ideas, like multiple ideas from entrepreneurs, you know, a couple times a year, $25,000 checks. I think they're like 50,000 now. Um, take a very small piece of equity and kind of incubate, right? Like mm -hmm. give them the tools right. they need. And um, one of the ideas that came through was uh, this idea of what has now become the zebra. Uh, at the time it was called insurance zebra. And I thought it was an awful name. I was like, <laughs> it's too long. Nobody likes insurance. So yeah, dealing with insurance. So like, uh, you know, let's not put in the name. Right. Right. But anyway, I, I, the idea itself, the concept was interesting to me, um, because I thought surely it had already been done. Right. And the right. concept was simply like build tools for people to compare insurance quotes online. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, at that point, what, what, what time period are we talking about? This is like 2012. So, you, so, so even then though, like I was thinking, you know, surely this had been done already. Like right. insurance is such a big category. Everybody has it, um, in some way, shape or form. So, uh, yeah. So that's what caused me to actually do some research on it was I thought like, how did this idea get through our, you know, this, in this incubator program? Because mm -hmm. like, surely this has been done. And the more I researched, uh, the more I found that it had not been done, like, Basically, it was all lead gen, like arbitrage, exactly. poor experiences. Um, and, and the more I did that research, the more I, I got intrigued by it. And so the guy who started the company, his name is Adam. He um, Adam Lyons? Adam Lyons, okay. yeah. He and I just like clicked. Um, and uh, yeah, and you know, he, he, he knew and saw what, what I had done at Show Clicks. Um, and it was just like a natural fit um mm -hmm. in many ways but uh but yeah I, I also had no idea what i was getting myself into in terms of insurance like it turns out like i thought how hard can this be well it turns out like <laughs> it's like really technical really issue. hard yeah like super technical like you know dealing with just just even the nomenclature and in insurance is like but you know that's why i thought there was such an opportunity because it was like this is so confusing for people exactly yeah, like that so people just like contracts i don't want to fuck with it I know. yeah exactly you know? exactly and all the terms insurance terms and stuff so it wasn't the sexiest industry but it was like i saw an opportunity exactly and mm -hmm. I, I yeah i just kind of ran with it to so. automate it i feel like once you start automating you know a mm -hmm. process that's what sparks the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and also, I mean, I, I like that mindset, you know, because uh, there's a lot of uh, things like that right now. Mm -hmm. Currently, you know, people think tends to think like, oh, we're living in a digital age. Everything is out there. Like, nah, bro, there's Not still really. a lot of opportunities. Still still a lot, a lot. You just got to think in that mindset. We have a few, but I don't think we want to go ahead and air it out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. Uh, <laughs> so, like, the, um, the whole Zebra concept, you know, y'all get started, y'all start talking. Uh, the entity was already established, right? It, it or yeah, it yes, it a... they they established it going through the um, incubator program. So there was already some like um, initial, you know, thing like kind of structure there. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, and so you come on. Um, how did things start going on about there? Now you actually have venture capital as well, right? Yeah, I mean, that was... Um, so I, I think there was a number of like things that kind of culminated in terms of being able to get that off the ground. One was um, just... Yeah, we, we, we were able to kind of get the, the traction early on with um, the idea because the idea was so, it was so simple to communicate, you know, it was like, which is important, I think, that it's something that people don't talk about enough is just like storytelling and like, mm -hmm. how do you, yeah, how do you even get somebody interested in the first place? And with what we were doing, it was like something that everybody I would talk to, like, you know, oh yeah, I hate dealing with that, you know, it was like, I, the, the need was there. Yeah, the need was there. So um, that was really helpful, I think, in selling the story to venture capitalists. And and, um, and then, you know, when you have a little bit of success under your belt already, it really kind of also helps, you know, cut through the noise a bit and, and, and um, get some more attention. But it, how do you show traction, right? How do you get, like, their attention through the growth phase? And we it was always about like trying to stay tr as true to our vision as possible, but understanding that like to get to where we want to go, we're going to have to, to maybe go off course in the industry traditionally was full of lead gen, as I mentioned, like just these, these kind of poor experiences. And it, that's the way that it was often like monetized. And, right. um, and that's also the way the insurance providers were used to kind of engaging with platforms like we were building. And so, we hated that model because of what it, you know, selling people's data was not like something we were really excited to do. Um, and it was also part of the reason we started it was to kind of, you know, create something better, yeah. but we still had to do some of that because the way that the industry was set up, it was not really going to accept our model and our vision on day one. Mm -hmm. So we had to kind of play, you know, kind of get in the game that we wanted to change and play that game first before we could actually change the game. And in doing that, we also were able to, you know, that helped us kind of get the traction we needed to get to the next step. So, you know, it's like, so I think, I think the lesson there is like some, some you know, oftentimes when you think about starting something, you think about like ex all the different things you want to do, right? It's like mm -hmm. a long list and it just keeps growing. Right. And, um, and you try to like boil the ocean by doing it all right. Or some big portion of it at, at mm -hmm. once. And you're afraid to kind of like have the liberty to, to like kind of go off I that. Prioritize or something like that. Yeah. Or, or to like play the game that you're trying to change, you know, like, mm -hmm. because it, 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 you could do that. Like, that's what we did. We, we had to get involved in ways that we, you know, it was, it was kind of the problem that we were trying to solve. We had to kind of participate in that, but we knew that if we kept telling the same story, if we stuck true to the, the vision and we always kept coming back to it, we would eventually get to a place where mm -hmm. we could reorient like the whole product and the model and everything right. to the, you know, in the direction that we originally wanted in the first place. So it's like people just like cre think that, you know, you can create all of the, you know, everything you want on the ver first version, right? Or like um, it, ha it it's, takes so long and you're going to go off course and you're going to do things you didn't think you had to do. And um, that's just the way it goes. And it takes way longer than you ever ever think right. you know so. And so you so you have adam lines you had joshua mm -hmm. and you know y'all are growing obviously mm -hmm. um what was that first milestone where y'all were like okay this is gonna be something serious um i think when we when we um so for me um we had a uh we had a feature uh, in a magazine called Consumer Reports. I shouldn't say we had a feature. We had basically, we'd done something with, with Consumer Reports where we provided them with data. Mm -hmm. They were talking about, you know, the insurance industry and insurance carriers. And right. so we provided the data. And when we did that and, and they used our data and they were, you know, they're such a reputable um, publication, independent publication. It, it was such a big win that kind of, it's the first thing that comes to my mind because it, it's, it really set up um, so many different things for us. Like 
you know, it was, once we had that, it was like, it was so much easier to talk to insurance carriers. <laughs> it was right. so much, um, easier to start to get some traffic because we had like these links coming from these, you know, articles that were very reputable mm -hmm. and we could, you know, they don't let you really publicize that, um, that you're featured in their magazine, but, but we could still leverage that in some different ways. Right. So that just like comes to mind that big, like press. Uh, yeah. And, and do you remember that moment? Like, I mean, if it's mm -hmm. something that comes to mind, you know, where it's like one of the biggest moments or milestones for them, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking right now, y'all were probably expecting that moment, you know, waiting for it to drop and y'all were like, all right, let's see if we get listed. Was it something like that or take me yeah. through how it was? Like, um, it was, uh, we didn't know how they were going to use the data. So, so it was, it was something they reached out to us. They, you know, they inquired about getting some of the, some information mm -hmm. from us and, and, um, we just worked that relationship really well. Like, you know, so we helped the journalists kind of navigate a, you know, a space that they weren't as familiar with right. as we were in, a, you know, all day, every day. Um, and then, uh, and, so, but we still didn't know what the story was going to be or how we were going to be involved in it and stuff. So when it came out and it was in their print as well as like a few different online, um, editions. And, uh, yeah, we were just like so thrilled because it really helped establish us as an authority in that space, you know, it was mm -hmm. like, they're using our data, they're referencing us, right, they're linking right. to us. Um, and I think one of the quotes was like, you know, they, they mentioned the zebra in like a positive light, you know, like trying to help with this th type of problem, like people, you know, dealing with insurance and shopping for insurance and stuff. And that was just such a, I don't know, such a game changer. Um, and I think also just that in that time frame, like a lot of things were kind of starting to finally come together. And that was like a, a manifestation of that right. that we could like latch on to. So, so yeah. after how long did you guys start seeing it? So how long did that take? That was like, that wasn't until probably like the third or fourth year into it. Um, 2016, yeah. 2017. Yeah, that sounds about right. Like 2016, 20, maybe it was actually wow. 2015. It was probably like three years into it, yeah. Can you, I think it sounds so passive, you know, it's just like, yeah, four years we built it. But like, there's so much shit that goes into like building a business and start scaling it like that. Mm -hmm. Like, eventually, did it just become normal to you seeing that type of growth? No, so, never became normal to me. I think the, um, it was always, I, you know, I'm somebody that's like, I would always tell my team like, you know, what are we going to do today to move the needle? So it was right. like, it was always check it. We were always looking at the data. We were always trying to optimize and test. And, um, and you know, there's things that we would do that would, you would just think would work and they didn't. And there's things we do didn't think it would work and they work phenomenally well. Um, but no, I, you never, you never get used to those ups or downs. I don't think you just try to like keep your eye on, you know, what it is that you're you're working and building toward and then use that momentum to just keep it snowballing forward. Mm -hmm. you know right. So I mean? it's just like little micro wins stacking on top of Yeah, that. yeah. And we would try to take time to like celebrate for sure. That was important, exactly. right? Because it was like everybody's working really hard. Um, but we didn't also want to like get, you know, get a big Did I ever celebrate, ego about, did I ever celebrate <laughs> a Postinos? No. You never heard of Pocinos? No. Dude, don't pass by. You need to go. It's basically like a wine bar, but man, it's a cool ass vibe. Here like, in Austin? You know, uh, I think they're everywhere. They have one in Dallas. Random ass Postino. stop. But I was yeah. Just, like, <laughs> no, it's like, it's a really dope spot. I was just thinking like, you know, um, the little uh, business parties that we be having too, but right. it's yeah. great, you know, just wine. I'm a wine lover. And, you know, they got brioche um, and like nice. Got the charcuterie boards. Oh, shit. That shit is good. <laughs> so, so what's your typical day, like being an entrepreneur, having to manage, you know, so many employees or, you know, all these projects? What's a typical, you know, day for Joshua? Um, it, it used to be a lot of meetings, mm -hmm. which I did not like at all. Like, I mean, I love the people I was meeting with. Don't yeah. get me wrong. And, and a lot of them would energize me for sure. Um, but... I just would feel so depleted at the end of the day, you know, just mm. lots and lots of meetings. Um, and it would be meetings from all, you know, folks in all different teams. So, you know, there's like the switching of context, like from one, you know, dealing with kind of like a customer issue for, and then the next minute you're dealing with like, you know, you're raising a ton of money and you're dealing with like the diligence mm -hmm. or something. It's just like so exhausting. Um, but, uh, yeah, so my days used to look like a lot of meetings. 
now, right? I, I, I'm starting something new, um, and I'm back to the grind. But I, and that is that oh, is yeah. Paragon. Paragon, Paragon. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's in the news and media space. Um, but uh, you know, my days now look like I, you know I have a kid now, so uh, they look like uh, much more chaotic than they did in terms of like <laughs> being rigid and, and organized. Um, so I really try to be as fluid like mm -hmm. as possible in terms of you know I, I don't I don't like to set up lots of meetings and. Um, I try to keep a lot of like discussions over email or Slack or mm -hmm. something just, just because it's, you know, you get, you get in a, you get on a phone call or something and you end up like, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I get, I get in rabbit holes so easily. Like, you know, oh, this idea, right? Like shiny object. Like, so it's just like, you end up <laughs> yeah. wasting like, yeah, a lot of time. <laughs> Uh, there's some value in that, but, but right. by and large, like when you're really like early stage, like you just don't have much time for anything, but like the things you got to get done then and there. So, so I try to, I try to stay very fluid, um, mm -hmm. in terms of like availability and openness and my calendar looks different from day to day, but, um, yeah, uh, there's really no two days that look the same. That's for sure. Oh, uh, interesting. So no like routine really. No, not right now. Um, Any like Jack Dorsey moments? No. Coffee in Meditate the morning, a few backflips before you wake up. <laughs> I mean, after you wake ten up, ten push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I need to get back at it. Actually, <laughs> like that's a startup grind. <laughs> it's like wake up, espresso. Let kidding. me tell you, when he wakes up, don't play me, bro. Like, <laughs> when he wakes up, and then like to kind of get in the mood, he shadow boxes. I throw a couple punches. Yeah, he shadow boxes. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I'm ready to go. Dude, no, I actually, I read this. Like, whatever it is, <laughs> he trying to play me. Look, no, I read this book called The Five A.M. Club by okay. Robin Sharma and he talks about like you know he does jumping jacks 10 push-ups and stuff like that yeah. when you wake up right out of bed that shit works for anybody listening to this podcast try that shit wake up you know throw a couple punches or do some sit-ups <laughs> or something yeah just get your blood, <laughs> get your blood going. yeah and it, it works like you know there's sometimes when I wake up and I'm like oh my god like this is gonna be a hard-ass day boom 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 all right I'm ready yeah, let's now. Go. I have to do it for like five minutes yeah and it really wakes you up so I know that shit is weird, but uh, yeah, I, I, I know this about myself. Like, you know, how people will have like different habits or like rituals or, you mm -hmm. know, or maybe they find a new like system or platform that they're using for organization or whatever it is. Right. Like I, I cannot get past like just the basics of like, I keep all my notes on like the same massively long document. I like, I, I made it now it's like searchable. Um, and I use Google Calendar, and and like I just I can't like like there's just some things like I cannot break like in terms of like productivity or mm -hmm. or, or organizational skills or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I used to be much more rigid with like some some of that stuff. Like, yeah. And I did have I will say like I miss when I lived in the city I would mm -hmm. walk to the office every day and that was like it was about a mile long walk and that was fantastic because it was a great way of just like having a you know a good like 20 minutes to myself 30 right. minutes to myself get my right. heart rate up a little bit clear your mind clear your mind yeah like I really need to be doing that type of stuff but if I'm honest with you mm -hmm. to answer your question yeah I I, I I'm not really doing much right now other than just like going <laughs> with the flow. I know. For some people, that's good to know because like some people feel like I'm one of those. I feel like I have to do the fixed routine every day. Yeah. And it's like, all right, next week I'm going to push it and I'm going to be waking up every day at four in the morning. That shit fails. <laughs> you know, it's like, bro, like relax. Just, you know, follow whatever yeah, makes sense. Whatever works. Um, um, so, yeah, so the zebra, you know, finally, you know, y'all have, y'all are having success. You and Adam, you know, y'all are taking off. And uh, y'all yeah, accomplished something really big that a lot of companies uh, don't get to accomplish, right? I mean, a, a majority of them. And y'all yeah, reached unicorn status. We did. How yes. how was that feeling for you, knowing that you know you've hustled from um, your early days at your first company, you know, building websites, uh, show clicks, and then the zebra and scaling it to a billion? Was it something that you expected? Yo, I, I, that's a that's a good question, man. Like, I, I don't know if I ever thought of it as like, you know, the, the, like, a, yeah, I kind of did expect it, I guess, because it was like, there go. it was like, uh, you know, you're raising money on this trajectory and 
like inevitably, so we, we, by the way, we had raised like hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So like, and at some point when you start taking like a $40 million check, you realize that like, you know, the outcome for the investors to have the returns that they're looking for, like it needs to be pretty sizable, right? right? Like, so, um, but yeah. And I mean, we had to sell that vision when we got, got those investors. So absolutely, I guess, uh, you know, we were expecting or hoping to get to that. And, um, yeah, I, Guy Ross, one of my favorite podcasters likes to say, you know, he uh, gets into, uh, interview a lot of big entrepreneurs and he asks them, do you think it was luck? Mm. And I kind of like how you said that you expected it because even though I think luck shows up in a lot of opportunities, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. only you know what you do in private, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I feel like you've had some days where you're alone and you really like push the vision, you know, stress and all that. Yeah, I mean, so, so look, like, I had a lot of people question me when I left Show Clicks, you know, uh, because again, we were, it was like, I stepped down at the peak <laughs> and I did that intentionally. I think like that was part of my, you know, why the timing, um, was I wanted to just kind of leave on a high note. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but a lot of people questioned me. It was like, why, you know, you, you just spent seven, eight years building this. It's like turned into this amazing thing. You have all, you know, they, they see all the, the materialism, they see all the accolades. Right. right? But like, <clears throat> you're right. I knew, I knew like, what I wanted for myself and you know I've never been one that's been great at like articulating my visions like I, I guess I'm like a uh, an artist that has a hard time like I have these things in my head these thoughts and visions in my head that right. like it's like really hard to like get I them out communicate yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and uh but you know you when you're with the case of the zebra we definitely took the path of like raising venture capital and stuff so you know, it's not a, to me, I don't really enjoy that process. However, it is, it is kind of nice because it forces you to like, think about like, where are you headed? You know, take a look back. What, you know, what has the story been? What is the story going to look like moving forward? And like, put it all like, upload it all onto paper or, or, you know, a presentation or something. And, and that exercise, that process is like really, really helpful um, mm -hmm. in that. So you have to like be thinking like big picture, you know, right. to, 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 but, but I'll say this too, like a billion, 10 billion, whatever. Um, it doesn't like, if your dream is, is, um, to maybe it's a lifestyle business, right? Like maybe it's not like a billion dollars or, or more like is, is, is awesome. But like, there's just some businesses that, that that's not like, you know, that's not that's with their like personality, their, their right, core. Right. Like, right. cause you have to, you have to like kind of start to structure your, like when you kind of get to that scale, mm -hmm. like you have to start to put the things in place like early and then, you know, it does like you just, that doesn't happen overnight. And, and so, but and if you you're looking these, for uh, just like a lifestyle business, right. meaning like, you know, something small, easier to manage, it still could be worth a lot, whatever. But like, you know, that's, that's cool. It's just a different path. You know, like you, 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 maybe you don't raise venture capital or maybe you don't raise as much or you take money from different types of investors or that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, it's like, it, that, but that is what we wanted to do. We wanted to build a consumer brand. We knew it was going to take a lot of money, you know, but we knew if we did it and did it well, it'd be worth a lot too. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously, you know, one of the big things is like dilution. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's company, every founder, you know, it's like, yeah. there's some who don't want to dilute themselves, others who, you know, might like, not like the idea. How did y'all take that? Did y'all ever have uh, any problem with that? Diluting oh, yeah, yourself to yeah. more investors? I'd be lying if, if I said that. <laughs> yeah, let's like, keep it real. Like, <laughs> no heartburn about dilution, that's for sure. I, but what, uh, one of the investors at some point, like, he, he kept reminding me, like, not to get so hyper-focused on, on that because mm -hmm. it's like, <laughs> I wish the audience could see this right now. <laughs> Jordan. It's Look at her just staring dog. at I know, me. Right? I was, uh, what type of dog is this? It's it? like kind of creepy the way she's looking at me right now. Yeah. That, that's an Italian greyhound. Um, let me let her out real quick. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so yes, uh, you know, dilution to that your was, shares. Was there any... There was heartburn for, uh, around that always. In every case, even if it was like... 
you know, an exciting time, you know, time in the mm-hmm. company with great terms and all that. There's always that like, you know, reservation about dilution, but, um, it's, when you pay a lot of attention to that, it's real, it's a slippery slope because it's real easy to kind of, especially if you have a co-founder, um, you can mess up your dynamics, right? Cause mm-hmm. it's like, you know, if everybody's just looking out for their own stake and not in the best interest of the company, then you're not going to have a company, right? It's like, so you have to kind of figure out what, you know, a balance between like, this is what's going to make me motivated Um, and you know, this is what's like fair and best for, for the company, like given everything else. Right. Right. So, um, and ultimately if you build a big business, like it's, you know, like, yeah, it's always great to have more equity, but like, you know, you'll have a great outcome no matter what, um, as long as you weren't completely dumb about dilution (laughs) during the, in in the way. Stay focused on the big image. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So awesome. So, uh, should we get into rapid fire questions? Uh, I think we should. So, All right. I think I have them on my phone. You have them on your phone? Is that my phone over there? Let me see. Where is it? I don't see a phone. On top of the table. I left it. Let me go check. Yeah, so we're going to uh, rapid fire questions. You know, we took some time to kind of think about. Um... Oh, it's not there? Okay. Look at this, dude. Still has that. Oh. What? How does that even happen? I don't even know. It's better view when you're watching movies, you know. You have. I the, think uh, I had, I had like a, <laughs> the curved screen. Yeah, the curved screen. I exactly. had a. Did you melt that? Like, no, I had a, an actual sh- charger that I like put like that, and it charges it, but it overheated, I think, and it melted because I. It did it something, Gio. Yeah. It yeah. Uh, it's but bending. I had to keep it in here because now if I take it off, I tried it to last time. It's like gonna fall apart. Oh, <laughs> so that it, it's the it, only it, case it, that's gonna, gonna get on my ass. Huh? It's the only case that I'll fit it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So rapid fire questions. We came up with some questions we wanted to ask you. And these are like questions that, you know, um, we were just curious about. So you want to go ahead and start it off? Or right, I'll let you do the rapid questions. All right. So let's see. We actually asked the first one already. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it. Okay. That was the daily routine one that I asked earlier. Yeah, I have a yeah, lame answer to that. Yeah, doesn't keep it fixed. All right, so here we go. Your favorite entrepreneur? Mm, um, I'm going to, uh, it's supposed to be rapid fire. Shoot. Um, I'm going to go with, the first person that came to my mind is Oprah Winfrey. Okay. Ooh, that's, <laughs> a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, I like that. All right, here we go. Second question. Book that inspired you? Um, Seven Keys of the Kingdom. Just about like Walt Disney, Disney World. Hmm. Okay. All right. So worst financial mistake or purchase? The Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> worst financial mistake or purchase? Um, oh, dude. That's, that's hard. I would say um, uh, I bought some palm trees lately that died. In that uh, whole, <laughs> were they expensive? Yeah, <laughs> they were very expensive. Uh, I spent like twenty some thousand dollars at a, wow, like a, a, a nursery. Wow. Just buying I'm going home people getting me some I'm not proud of that. Here. That's uh, the whole point. Is yeah. that? Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um, which artist do you stream the most? Um, I'm gonna go with. I, I listen a lot to. Um, how about? Um, gosh. Uh, Queen. I've been listening to a lot of Queen. Mm, I just, okay. did, I just okay. did like a Freddie Mercury painting. Well, not it was a while ago at this point, mm-hmm. but yeah, doing that. Like well, we gonna have to see that. I, I had to be nice. listening to Queen all the time while I'm painting. And yeah. have mm-hmm. you seen Have you seen the movie? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Crazy. You mean Rhapsody? Yeah, yep. it's awesome. All right. So, what's on your Christmas wish list? Um, Christmas wish list, like just yes. anything. What was it? I mean, well, I, I was say, thinking more so like, what is that one thing? You know, we all have. Like, yeah, what's that want? one thing you really want for Christmas? Um, I've been thinking about getting that uh, an Apple Watch. Is that what they're called? You should. Watch? You Apple should. Watch. Uh, yeah, yeah, Apple Watch. They're gonna have um, all your data. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and, and that's that's like the data piece. And then the other reason I haven't got one is because like I'm already way too connected, you know. Like, yeah. Too, yeah. But I really do kind of want. It's one. convenient. So, yeah. Look into. Uh, I think it's called Loop. Uh, yeah, one of is my it a ring? Uses loop. No, it's a, it's a watch, but it 
tracks your sleep and everything. It's but does it more integrate? data. No, but it's really dope because it, it gets it, your deep sleep and all that. So. Is it just by itself or does it integrate with like it's, the it's a iPhone subscri- or... subscription and like an app and stuff like that? Oh, I think it's better okay. than Apple Watch. Oh, okay. oh, girls, come on. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all okay. good. All they right. want to participate. Yeah, I do. <laughs> all right, so Coin, Coinbase or Robinhood? Robinhood. Robinhood? Okay. That's what I use. Mm, okay. Um, Gemini. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, That's a good one, but I got my thoughts on crypto too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, the best travel destination? Italy. Italy. Where in Italy? Yeah. Amalfi Coast. Is that, what's it, is that what it is in your restroom? Yeah, yeah. I uh, took that picture. I, you know, I was like, yo. Wait, why don't you just wait, tell me about that? You took that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's dope. Yeah, we need to go tell Mafia. Yeah. Dude. Dude, it's I, like a but, rom- uh, romantic spot, uh, huh? I want to take it's romantic. It, there, it's just, yeah, there's something special. The food, um, everything. It's just a like, oh, yeah, great, nice great place. What was the weather like? When did you go? What, uh, what month? Um, it, was, it was actually starting to cool down, so it was a little like after summertime. I forget what month of the year it was this was a couple years ago um but we do this thing called the hike of the it was called the hike of the gods or the path of the gods and it's like right along the coast mm-hmm. and that's where i got you know i had this picture in my my restroom that i the photo that i took I'll and it's just it it's just like <laughs> it looks professional stunning it's like i took that with my phone it's like so hard to take a bad photo in italy you know oh, on the that's how coast. It's, it is. it's like so gorgeous yeah, yeah you can't mess it up um but yeah dude like everything's everything's like much more rich there mm-hmm. like in terms of like the vibrant i should say like the you see the fruit and the vegetables are just like brighter colors and just taste better like i don't know it's just I, everything <laughs> i like that yeah, yeah. i like that okay. <laughs> everything like that. about my trip to italy was amazing so yeah i gotta go with awesome. that. awesome all right well, that all pretty right. much wraps up those uh rapid questions yeah anything else Damn, I wish we could keep going, but uh, we're yeah, a little, we're yeah. an hour over. All right, <laughs> so, an hour over. You guys, everybody, uh, this was Joshua Zibik. Uh, Z- the Zibiak. Zibiak. I'm sorry about that. Joshua Zibiak. You could just trail off. That's, Zibiak. The, that's what I do after I have a couple of drinks. I try to say my last name. It was the one. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.